introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, Stefan Engelhardt is my name. I'm responsible at SAP for our Innocent Business Unit Utilities. We're here in Munich at the SAP for Utilities conference and there's a lot of talk about smart grids. Can you tell us first of all what is a smart grid in your definition? That is a very good question because whenever you talk to somebody you get a different definition of a smart grid. Ours is, I think, pretty easy. I think a smart grid is uh, an intelligent system um, where every appliance, every part of the system uh, can um, communicate in a bi-directional bi way with the other um, and where you have um, a characterized way to uh, produce power in a decentralized way. So we'll have a lot of decentralized power production units that have to be orchestrated together in order to um, optimize the energy uh, efficiency as good as possible. Okay, and what are the benefits of that to either the utilities or to the utilities customers? So the benefits for the utilities um, and the customers at the end of the day is that um, you have an, an optimal way to control uh, the energy consumption. The, the, you are able to reduce uh, peaks dramatically. You can quickly react on um, renewable energy sources that you hardly can predict up front. So there is some way to forecast, of course, weather conditions, but you never know exactly, for instance, when the sun is shining where, how far that uh, impacts, for instance, the local uh, generation, uh, which enables you then uh, to shut down maybe conventional power plants if possible. And if you have an intelligent grid, a smart grid that is able to uh, communicate um, in an intelligent way, uh, then you're pretty quick in, in your decisions and can achieve it quite, quite um, efficiently. And how does that benefit consumers? The consumers will benefit at the end of the day um, from cleaner energy. I think that would be the first impact. I don't know yet whether it, energy is really getting cheaper. So I think the quality is getting better of the energy. So, um, but there is as well ways to reduce prices. So if the, if the consumer, for instance, is willing to take the risk of um, energy procurement, and if he says, okay, if you're going short in your uh, production, I'm, I'm, I'm signing a contract for green energy, but if you're short in production, it's okay for me if we reduce my capacity, or it's, I'm even fine if you shut down some of my appliances for some time, then I'm, I think the utility can offer even very attractive prices on that. It's a trade-off at the end. Okay, and this all seems quite theoretical as yet. Are there any real smart grids deployed anywhere? So there are a lot of pilots going on uh, in a, in a yeah, regionally, um, uh, in, 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 a, in a closed environment more or less. So a real smart grid that is uh, yet operating fully, I'm not aware of. So there are a lot of projects where you have intelligent meters deployed, some even on a country level. So we have a full deployment in Italy, we have meanwhile almost a full deployment in Sweden. But uh, they are, this is just the first step of a smart grid. And that is the most important step because you have to have the infrastructure. You have, you know, you have to know what you measure before you really can optimize uh, the consumption. Um, but the way of this intelligent collaboration is not yet um, realized um, in, on a wide scale. It's maybe an under lab conditions going on. Okay. And if you were to build out a smart grid yourself, what would it look like? What's your ideal? smart grid look like? I mean the ideal smart grid would of course be absolutely um, comprehensive with everything. I think it's uh, you have to start in small steps. First thing is really to provide, to, to exchange um, the meters that you uh, have to have as a position and then build uh, on, on top of that step by step the additional functionality. But before we do that there's a lot of um, work to be done before. Uh, for instance, um, the question of interoperability of these different um, technical appliances with systems, with um, uh, meters. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of open questions regarding standards that are not yet clarified. Mm -hmm. But in order to come to this smart grid at the end of the day, uh, this has to be resolved. So the, the idle smart grid, um, I think there's only one way how you build it. So it, it, it requires really the intelligent, fun, the intelligent uh, infrastructure, the intelligent technology. Uh, the, the question is only how do we come as quick as possible to this smart grid. There's no, I think there's no one or the other way around to build a smart grid. Okay. And to get there as quickly as possible, what's the greatest change that needs to be made? Is it do we need more technical advances? We need to change regulations? 
what, what, what are the barriers that are currently stopping rollouts? I think the technology is already, um, is already in a quite good mode. So there are still some questions to be clarified, but minor questions. Uh, I think it's a question of um, yeah, common standards, uh, agreement on, a, on a common standards of communication in order to make sure that you have, for instance, an intelligent um, dishwasher that can communicate via um, a, a different technical um, instance with the, with the commercial system of the retailer at the end of the day, independent on uh, which parties are in, in, in between from a, from a provider perspective. And uh, the other challenge is certainly as well um, yeah, yeah, a political challenge. I think um, that it's very difficult to, to calculate a business case, a pure economic business case, on, uh, on smart meters or smart grids. Uh, if we look on a, on a global scale, the business case is easy. There is one because it will reduce uh, dramatically uh, carbon dioxide emissions and um, reduce energy consumption. But if we look from, from the perspective of an individual organization uh, of a, that has to make money at the end of the day, it's tough to calculate a business case. So it, it would help to um, come up with stimulus packages that we have in the US where a lot of money is flowing into initiatives like that. Uh, we need more of that and that certainly would speed up as well um, the deployment of smart grids. Okay, and speaking of the US and, and the EU and things, are there any particular regions or geographies that are going more quickly than others? Who are the laggards and who are leading the race at the moment? Well, it's the, that's a tough question. I think in, in Europe we are pretty far ahead with, if we look to the, to the physical rollout of the infrastructures, of the initial infrastructures, as I said before. I have the impression in the US the thinking is a bit different, so there the, it's first a mindset thing, so it's a, a thoroughly planned activity and all of the discussions are discussed up front and then it's, it's more or less planned to be rolled out in a bigger way. But we have very clear programs, um, many of our customers are planning in 2011 to have the first um, tranches of their customers on smart meters. And we see a very good tr track record on that going on. And we have as well first projects going on in Australia, for instance, which where smart grids is as well far ahead. So it, there is no real um, um, yeah, quicker um, area than the other. It's, it's tackled in different ways. Uh, we expect that the big wave of um, smart meter and smart grid projects, so well, smart grid is already a, a more uh, long-term vision, but the first smart grid deployments on a larger scale, we expect uh, 2000, end of 2010, 2011 to happen. Okay, great. Stefan, that's been fantastic. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you.